What would happen if you were to look at a skeleton without any muscles on it to assist in the movement of it? Well, pretty simple, it would collapse. So let's decide what muscles do we have to add to the skeleton in order to get it back up into standing position. The first muscle we would connect to the bones would be the quadriceps. One side connects to the tibia and the other to the femur and the pelvis. Now, let's activate the muscle and see what happens. The muscle extends the knee and the leg straightens. What do we do now that the legs are straightened but the body is still leaning forward? How would it be possible to lift the torso? How will we straighten the trunk from a position of flexion to extension? Well, let's connect another muscle. Now, this one is going to be connected on the pelvis and the other side to the femur. Now, this muscle is obviously the glutes. In addition, we'll be adding another muscle that will help to lift the trunk. Here, we're going to connect one side to the lower part of the pelvis and the other side to the tibia. Now, these are, of course, the synergist muscles, the hamstrings. Now, by activating these muscles, we're going to see what happens next. Here, the muscles pull the pelvis and the trunk lifts. We can see that the whole movement is performed through the hip joint by hip extension. But we have another problem. The spine is not stable. This is the time to strengthen and stabilize it. This will be performed by your spinal erectors. And in addition, we will also going to be needing to wrap the abdomen in a belt that maintains intra-abdominal pressure. Now this is obviously the transverse abdominus. Let's activate all of these muscles and see if we did it right. Nope, not quite yet. What do you think we're going to have to add? Well, to prevent the knees from collapsing forward, we're going to have to put it back into place by the contraction of the gastrocnemius and the salaris. These will pull the tibia backwards and prevent the knee from collapsing forward. Now let's test the final result. It looks like we have a good squat. The femoris extends the knee, the gluteus maximus extends the hip joint, and the hamstrings and hip abductors assist in the hip extension. The gastrocnemius and plantar flexors, the ankle joint, the core muscles stabilize the torso. The next thing to discuss is the fact that muscles do not have brains and do not know nor care how they are being loaded, just that they are levers that are being loaded. So let's take this squat for an example. As we've just established, the quadriceps function during the squat is to extend the lower leg, the tibia. In order to decide how much load is being delivered to the quadriceps, we're going to need to do a little bit of math for me to explain. So let's say, hypothetically, this is a 200-pound man who is squatting with a 225-pound loaded barbell on his back. Now, to keep the math very simple, although he is squatting 225 pounds of weight on his back, you must also add to that his body weight above his quadriceps. This will be roughly three-quarters of his weight. Now that will be all the weight above his legs, 150 pounds, added to the 225 pound loaded barbell, equaling 375 pounds. Now as you can see, since the tibia length has a magnification factor of roughly 20 times due to its length, that would mean that the 375 pounds would be multiplied by 20, totaling 7,500 pounds of load. That number however, then needs to be multiplied by the efficiency factor 33% of his lower leg of the tibia. This efficiency factor is because his lower leg does not pass a 30 degree angle, limiting its range of motion severely. Now that will be equaling 2,475 pounds total being loaded onto his quadriceps. To take this a single step further, you'll be dividing it by his two legs, equaling 1,238 pounds total delivered to each quadricep while performing this squat. Now, this may seem like a large amount of load, however, it's not nearly as much as it could be, and it is terribly inefficient. Now, interestingly, the quadricep is not even the most loaded muscle during the squat. The most loaded muscle while performing a squat is actually the erector spinile. Now this is because the torso is a far longer lever than his tibia and as such is magnifying the resistance much more than the lever that loads the quads. In short, 
This means that the most loaded muscle on the body is your rectus spinal, or the back, even though the squat is not meant as a back exercise. It should also be noted that all exercises should be performed with full range of motion for maximum results, as well as isolating the muscle again for maximum results. Any compound exercise will be limiting your gains. It is at this point you should be asking yourself, isn't there a better way to load the quadriceps? The answer is yes. So, in the same hypothetical situation, we'll take the 200 pound man and have him perform a leg extension using 150 pounds of resistance, or 75 pounds per ankle. In this case, you'd be loading each of the quadriceps with 1,500 pounds of force. This is due to properly using lever magnification, as well as full range of motion inside of the correct resistance curve, what biomechanics is all about.